Okay, in this video lecture, we're going to talk about the variation of parameters. Okay? And so we're going to go through and um, derive the formula, which is going to involve the Ronskian, okay? and that will depend also on finding the homogeneous uh, portion of this differential equation. Okay, so here is the right, here's the second order differential equation that we have here. Okay, um, keeping in mind that our coefficients are basically constants. Okay, and so what we're going to do is first let's go ahead and um, go ahead and write this in standard form. Okay, and then once we do that, then we're going to assume that there are um, uh, so assume that we have a uh, solution set for the homogeneous part. And then what we want to do is we want to strive in coming up with basically another solution um, that depends on the that depends on the homogeneous solution for this. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and put this into normal form. Okay, so we're going to standardize this. So divide everything by A2. And again, I'm going to leave off the x here. Okay. We understand that those are functions of x. Our x is our independent variable. Okay, so this can be this can be written as uh, y double prime a o a one over a two. Uh, we can call that let this be some let's say p of x, and then we have a zero over a two. I can call that q of x times y equals to I have g over a two here. Uh, so let's call that f of x. All right, and suppose that P and Q, right? Uh, suppose that these are uh, continuous on some given interval, including the function here. Okay. Right. Those are continuous on some given on some on some interval. So our desire here, right? Um, the desire is to come up with a particular solution of this form. Okay. Okay, so for the particular solution, okay, we want to seek a solution of this form. We have yp equals to u1 of x plus y1 of x plus u2 of x times y2 of x. Okay. So this is the solution that we're, uh, that we desire, okay? Where y1 and y2 are solutions of the corresponding homogeneous uh, differential equation, okay? And again, that's on some particular interval here for y double prime plus p of x times y prime plus q 
q of x times y equals to zero. Okay, so for the homogeneous part. All right. So this is right. This is again. So this is the form that we need to figure out how to get to this. The form of interest. Okay. So our goal here is to figure out u1 and u2. And once we have that, then uh, we have a, uh, basically we have our variations of parameter uh, formula, okay? All right, so with any of these kind of derivations, uh, we take, basically take our solution form and substitute it back into the different equation, expand everything out, and then go through the mathematics of deriving that formula. Okay, so that's the next thing we're going to do. Okay, so here's the form we have. We're going to go, going to go ahead and take um, the derivative of this. So the, taking the derivative with respect to x. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm going to omit the x values here. Okay, because we understand that this is, um, we're using x as our independent variable. The y prime is going to be, right, we have u1 times the derivative of y1, okay? So we need to use the product rule here, okay? Plus, we have y1 times u1 prime, okay? So that is the result of taking the derivative of this term, right? This, uh, this part using the product rule. And then we need to take, right? We need to take the derivative of this, okay? So this is gonna be u2, times y2 prime okay, plus y2 times u2 prime. Okay, so now we have y prime. Now we need to get y double prime. Okay, so we have to take the derivative of all this. So we need to use the product rule here, find the product rule here, here, and here. Okay, so we're going to get Let's see, y1 times, right, y, sorry, u1 times y1 double prime plus y1 prime times u1 okay, plus the second term, we have y1 prime times y1 double prime okay, plus u1 prime, okay, times y1, let's see, I mean, u1 prime times, let's see, kind of lost the train of thought here. I see u1, so u1 prime, so right here, so u1 prime, u1 double prime. Okay, so this has to be, sorry, u1. So u1 times u1 double prime plus u1 prime times y1 prime. Okay. All right, so moving on to the second term. Okay, we're gonna get plus u2 times y2 double prime, okay? Plus y2 prime times u2 prime. And then finally, for the, for the last term, uh, we end up getting y2 times u2 double prime, okay? Plus u2 prime times y2 Fine. Okay. All right, so just double checking the result here. Okay, we have this. Make sure everything's correct. All right, get one double prime. Okay. And, okay, so, and everything's good. Okay. Hopefully. All right. So now we're going to substitute all those in. Okay. Into here. Okay. Okay. So this is, so here's what we get. 
Okay, so we have U1, my double, sorry, my one double prime, okay, uh, plus my one prime U1. Okay, and that should be a prime here. Okay. And then we have plus my one prime U1 prime plus, uh, let's see. All right, so I have all this. Okay, so let's see. All right, so I need one more term here, plus U1. I one, so U1 prime, okay. Plus, this is going to be Y1 prime. Okay, so basically just taking all this, all right? I'm just, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a laborious uh, task here. Um, so just making sure these are correct. Okay, so that should be Y, should be U1 double prime. And then we have this term. Okay, so one, two, three, four plus, okay, we're gonna have U2, Y2 double prime, okay, plus Y2 prime, U2 prime, plus Y2, U2 double prime. Plus U2 prime, Y2 prime. Okay. All right. All right. Just double check again. Okay. So U2, then Y2, two U2 prime. Okay. So that looks good. And remember, there was a. Um, so I think on one of these, yeah, there should be, yeah, we have a double prime there. Okay. Now we're gonna have plus, okay, so P times Y. All right. So so P times Y, sorry, P times Y prime. Okay. So Y prime is up here. Okay. So that's gonna be P times U1 times U1 prime plus p times y1 u1 prime plus p times u2 y2 prime plus p times y2 u2 prime okay so just double check make sure i'm not missing anything here all right and finally we're gonna have q times y so q times y where y is this, okay, here. So we have q times u, u1 times y1, okay, plus q times u2, y2. Right. Equals to f of x. Okay, so that's what we get after substituting uh, y, y prime and y double prime back into here. So what we can do from here is we can, um, we can start to group terms together and then things will, um, there's uh, something interesting that's gonna happen here, all right? All right, so we have, let's first look at the terms that have U prime in it. Sorry, U1, sorry, U1 in it. So we have U1 here. Um, and there should be another one here, right? There's one here and one right here. Okay, so we have this, so U1. Plus P Y1 prime plus Q times Y1. All right, the next thing is to locate uh, U2. We have a U2 term here, and there's one here, and there's one here. We can go ahead and factor that out. Um, 
Okay, so let's see. If I do double prime plus P times Y2 prime plus Q times Y2. Okay, and then we have the remaining terms left over here. Okay. All right, so. Let's go ahead and write those up. We have plus y1. So y1 times, sorry. So y1 times u1 double prime plus, let's see, u1 prime times y1 prime plus y2. I'm going to go underneath here. So y2 times u2 double prime plus u2 prime y2 prime. And then um, let's look at terms with p in it. Okay, so these two, right, we can factor out P. So we have Y1 times U1 prime, okay, plus uh, this one. Okay, and then plus y1 prime times u1 prime plus y2 prime times u2 prime equals to half of x. Okay, so let's just make sure that we have the same number of terms here. So we have 6, 8, 12, 14, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, good. All right. Um, so just making sure, right, we have U1, uh, oh, sorry, Y1, U1 double prime, okay, that is, let's see, I think that should be a prime there. Um, let's see. So Y1, So y1 u1 double prime. Uh, hmm. Have this one. And we have this one over here. Okay, and we have this one. And okay, I'm not seeing where is this y1. So I gotta make sure all my terms are here. Let's see my one. Let's make sure. These get really tedious. Um, so let's see, Y1, two. Oh, okay, um, here. Oh, that shouldn't be prime here, sorry. Should it be, oh, it should be actually. That should be prime. And okay, so all right, so you um, so okay, so we have this from here. Double check here. Okay, so this shouldn't be so that shouldn't be prime then. All right, so that's where it's coming from. Okay, so this term right here is so basically this term is coming from here. Okay. Okay, let's see, yeah. and that is, let's see, making sure here, so that is, yep, so that's coming from this one. Okay, so everything's good. All right, so now, okay, 
So this and this, if you think about it, um, if you go back to in the assumption, we said that Y1 and Y2 are solutions to the homogeneous uh, differential equation, okay? So that would imply, right? okay? That would imply that this would be zero. Okay. And the same thing for this. Again, so because Y1 is a solution to the homogeneous system, to the homogeneous equation, right? And the same thing here, Y2 is a solution to the homogeneous part. So therefore, this and this is going to, this is going to be zero. So all this basically uh, we can cancel out, okay? All right, so now let's, let's go back and rewrite this. So what we have here, okay, um, okay so we basically going to rewrite all this. So we have, let's see, y1 u, so u, y1 times u1 double prime, okay, plus this one, okay. and then we have y2 times u2 double prime, plus u2 prime, y2 prime, and then this part. Okay. All right, so now look at this part. So this part right here, if you look carefully, this is really, this is going to be the derivative of y1 times u1 prime. So just take the product rule, apply it to that, and you get basically this. You know, u1, sorry, y1 times the derivative of this, get u1 double prime plus u1 prime times y1 prime. And likewise, you can do, Thing. We can do the same thing here. We have y2 times u2 prime. Okay. And then we have the rest of it there. Okay. All right, so let's see. Um, all right, and then we can consolidate these two under the same differential. Okay, so let's go back up here. It's all this here. Okay, so from here we get, we have D, dx. Uh, y1 times u1 prime plus y2 times u2 prime plus p times y1 times u1 prime plus y2 times u2 prime. Okay, and then and then we have those terms there. So let's put this here. Okay, so making sure the notation is good here.
Okay, so remember the goal, right? The goal is that we need to figure out what U1 and U2 are, okay? For, right, for this, for the particular solution. Okay. All right, so that's what we can do is make him some assumption here. Okay. If we assume what we can do is we can assume that this, that the derivative of this is equal to zero. And then if that's the case, um, so, if the, right, so then we can say that, um, so if this, if this equals, sorry, we can assume that this equals zero and then therefore the derivative of that is zero. So this is what we have here. So that's going to be our assumption. We're going to assume that this is zero. So therefore, obviously, then this has to be zero. Okay. Right. And so then, as a as a consequence of this, okay, we end up getting basically a system. So because this is so, this is one of the this is right. This is an assumption, so that gives us a system. And because of this requirement, we end up with this part. Okay. So again, based on this assumption, we have basically have a system here in terms of U1 and U2 and its derivatives. And this right. okay. So again, we're assuming that this, we're assuming that this piece is zero, therefore the derivative of that's zero, and then therefore this, this comes out directly. So, so there's our system, right? Okay. So what we can do, uh, we can go ahead and let's go ahead and write this in matrix form. Um, so we have okay. Y1, Y1, Y2, and then Y1 prime and Y2 prime. So basically this taking the taking the derivatives of Y1 and Y2. Um, so we have basically just the rod scale of Y1 and Y2. And then we have multiply this. Right? So U1 prime and U2 prime. That is our uh, solution vector. And this is going to be equal to zero alpha x. All right, there's our okay, there's our system. Okay. So to solve this, right, to solve this, it's um, it's this is ideal for um, for using Kramer's method, Kramer's rule. Okay. okay, so we're going to use Kramer's rule to solve this system. Once we do that, once once we have u1 prime and u2 prime, then 
we need to take the integrals by u1 and u2. All right, so the rot, so basically, yeah, so we have, um, we need to figure out to apply the uh, to apply this all this, we need to figure out the uh, determinant of the coefficient matrix. Okay. And then we need to take this. We need to take this vector, cover it with the first column, find the determinant of that, and then take this, cover it with the second part, and then find the determinant. So this is all based on some concepts from linear algebra, okay, which actually that's actually I proved that in my in your algebra course. But anyway, we're going to apply it here. All right, so we're going to, we're going to let W, okay. We're going to let W be the, basically this is just a lot scan of Y1 and Y2. Okay. And then we're going to let, I'm going to call this, let's say this is W1. So W1 is going to be, Again, what we do is we take this, we take this vector, cover up with the first column, and, and W. We need that component, and then we have W two. Going to take this vector and cover up the second column. Okay. All right, so we can go ahead and expand on this. All right, so I'm going to leave this as it is. Okay, uh, but for W1, we can actually come up with a formula for that. Um, that's just going to be Y2. So that will zero minus Y2 times F of X. It's just using the definition of the determinant for our two by two matrix. And then W2, it's going to be Y1 times F of X and then minus zero. Okay. So the way we get U1, the way we get U1 prime and U2 prime is from here. So we get okay, U1 prime. So we basically take W1 and divide it by W. So this is going to be minus y2 times f of x divided by w. Okay. And then for uh, u2 prime, it's going to be w2 divided by w. Which is y2 is y times f of x divided by y2. W. So y1 times f of x. All right. There's the forms. Now all we need to do okay, is just to take the integral of both sides. So u1, so taking the integral of both sides here. So they're going to have minus y2 times f of x divided by w. And we're taking the integral with respect to x. Likewise, we have this one. Okay, so plugging that back into, into this form, okay, we can get our solution, get our desired result. So we have YP, for the particular solution, we have U1. U1 was given here, so it's gonna be, right, so we have, Y1, I'm gonna go ahead and put the negative here. So we have the integral of Y2 times F of X divided by W plus Y2 okay, 
So plugging you two into here. Okay. And that gives us basically the variation of parameters for them. So the only drawback to this is that, as with any derivative, as it, with any formula, there's always a drawback. Um, there's always some complications. Is the uh, these integrals could be a little bit complicated. Um, okay. All right. So that is again, that's the variation of parameters. Okay. So we're going to look at we'll look at an example to apply this. All right, let's take a look at an example. All right, so let's suppose we want to solve this second order differential equation. So we have y double prime minus 4y prime plus 4y. Equals to say, x plus 1 times e to the 2x. Okay, so obviously we have to find the basis solutions. That is the solutions to the homogeneous differential equation. Okay. So we can formulate our characteristic equation. So we're going to end up getting m minus two squared. So we have m equals to two with multiplicity of two. Okay. So because of that, we have a double root basically here. So our solution for y of h, that is just going to be c1e to the 2x plus c2 times x times e to the 2x. And so from here, we have our, uh, we have our, um, basic, we have our basis solutions, e to the 2x and x times e to the 2x. I'm gonna let y1 be equal to e to the 2x and y2 be equal to x times e to the 2x. Now all you do is just kind of plug them into here and to get our particular solution. Okay. All right, so let's, we need the right, we need to figure out the rock scan okay, of W1 and W2. Okay. Let's do that on the side here. So taking the success of derivatives here, we're going to have 2 times e to the 2x. And then here we're going to get e to the 2x right, uh, plus 2 times or 2 times x e. And then so from here, okay. Um, so we're going to get e to the 4x, okay, so this times this. Minus this is going to be two x times e to the four x. 
Um, so that's going to leave us with e to the 4x, which is never equal to zero, uh, which is not surprising because these are nearly independent of each other. Okay, back up here. Okay, so now we can figure out, start to figure out these components. We have integral of y2 times f of x divided by w. Okay. All right, so y2 was x times e to the two x, and then f of x. So f of x is um, is basically here. So it's x plus one times e to the two x. So when you're doing these problems, make sure that you normalize it in the beginning. Otherwise, your f of x is going to be it's not going to be correct. And then we're dividing by e to the four x, which was the loss cube of y1 and y2. Okay. Um, so simplifying this, um, we're going to end up getting, um, uh, let's see, so we have e to the, so this is going, so e to the 4x will cancel out with the e to the 4x on top here. Um, so we basically end up with the integral of x squared plus x. Okay, and then obviously the using the power rule, it is just one third x cubed plus one half x squared. And we don't need to add the constant here because eventually it's absorbed into another constant. We can add that part on later. All right, let's do the other part. So we have the integral of this part. Where y1 was e to the 2x, we have e to the 2x times x plus 1 times e to the 2x, all divided by e to the 4x. Okay. Uh, y1, yeah. So again, e to the 4x cancels out. Right, and we're left with the integral of x plus 1. So this is going to be one half x squared plus x. Okay. Okay. So we pretty much uh, did the kind of the dirty work here. Now we just have to put everything, plug everything back in. All right. So why? So our particular solution. Okay. We have minus y one. So it's minus e to the two x. Okay, um, times one third x cubed plus one half x squared, and then plus y2. Y2 was x times e to the 2x times, uh, times this part. Okay, we can simplify this a little bit. So we have minus one half e to the two x, or I can put x squared first, although it doesn't really matter. And then plus, this is gonna be one half x cubed times e to the two x plus one half x squared times e to the two x. And then we can, 
simplify this even more. Let's say we have, so um, we have this term and this term, that's gonna give us one six x cubed e to the two x. And then, um, okay, so let's see, we have one half x squared. Okay, one half here. So one half. Oh, that should be, sorry, that should be x. That should be a square here, sorry. That's coming from here. Third. Okay, one third x cubed. Okay, so that's okay. And then I have. Oh, I don't have one half here. Sorry. That should just be x squared times e to the two x. I, yeah, I was looking at this one half. So therefore, this is going to be one half x squared times e to the two x. Okay. All right. So, um, so therefore, right, we have the general solution now. Right, so this is the particular part. Uh, we have the and we have the homogeneous part. So well, therefore, the overall solution is going to be the homogeneous part or the complementary part plus the particular part. Okay, so we have y of h. We have c one e to the two x plus c two times x times e to the two x and then plus this part. There it is. There's our general solution. All good? Yep. Yeah, it's okay. Any questions? Are you all right? All right, so that is how we can apply variation parameters. So just remember that if you have something in front of y double prime here, you should divide everything by that, um, whether it's a constant or some code or some. Uh, something more complicated. Okay. Okay, so the next uh, type of the next or the next technique we're going to look at, and we'll do this on Thursday, um, is what happens, right? What if we don't have constant in front of these, in front of the y and the and the differentials? So let's assume that you have uh, constant here, and let's say x here, 
and x squared. So this is what's called a Cauchy Euler differential equation. So we'll go through uh, we'll go through that and uh, we'll basically go through the derivation. And it's going to involve looking at different cases depending on what the discriminant is. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'll just go ahead and um, I think this is all for now for today. We'll just do this. Um, and again, if you have any questions, just send me an email.